Great. Happy Monday night. Welcome to our Zoom. Thank you for bearing with our technical difficulties. Krista is flying back from California, has had an awesome time and barely any service. So if y'all have been trying to get a hold of her, that's why. Um, they haven't had good internet reception, but it's been a great time with her family. Who knows what day of the month it is today? It's the 15th. I love the 15th for a lot of different reasons. I feel like in our businesses, it is midway point, but it's kind of that time where we're like, man, I made a goal at the beginning of the month and I'm not really sure if I'm going to hit the goal. Sometimes it plateaus for all of us, but my encouragement to you is to check your back office. Are you close to the goal that you set out? If not, it's time to hit the pedal to the metal. There are a lot of days left in August. So set the goals. My favorite thing to do is check my points in the morning and watch them grow throughout the day. That means that you're having growth versus just subscriptions running and you're able to help people who haven't ordered in a while get back on the products, or you're helping people start brand new on different things and um, watching your team grow. Helping your team also reach their goals is huge as well. A couple of things I wanted to talk about tonight before I hand it over to Jesse are strengths. Can you guys type in the chat, what are some things that you think you have as a strength for your network marketing business? I'm going to, this is going to be kind of a, more of an interactive zoom a little bit. Um, some of the things I wrote down that could be strengths is social media marketing, graphics. You're really friendly. You do relationships well. You have customer, really great customer care. You write thank you notes. You're personable with people. You're checking up on them. Um, you're really good at event planning, planning events, getting your team together. What else could you do? I can't see my chat. Are you guys talking in the chat and I can't see you? Let me pull up my chat. Nobody is answering. Somebody give me a strength that you guys have. What's a strength you see in someone else? Social media for sure. Jenna, 100%. You're amazing at graphics, photography. That is an amazing strength that you have. Encouraging people. Greta, you are such a good encourager. Cheering people on. I love that. What I want you guys to do is I want you to think and at least identify three strengths in your business because you are a business owner and we're going to talk about being a business owner today. When you signed up as a VIP customer and you're on the Zoom call, so you want to do a little bit more than be a VIP customer, right? You've probably upgraded to an ambassador or you're going to do so soon as, for as, as soon as you refer your first person. You have a pretty little business wrapped in a box that you get to do your way. When you get to do that, you have two things. Some of us might just take this and say, hey, this looks like fun. I'm going to see where this goes. You kind of have a hobbyist mindset and you're like, I'll do this on the side. Maybe it'll be fun. It's not really worth any sacrifices right now. We'll see where this thing goes. And then others of you come in this with a business entrepreneur mindset. You're ready to make this your own. No two businesses look alike, right? I don't even think every Chick-fil-A looks alike. Some of the Chick-fil-A owners here are our personal friends. I go to his Chick-fil-A and I might go to a different Chick-fil-A and they have a little bit of a different flavor. They might do customer care a little bit differently. They might run their drive through a little bit differently. Their buildings look different. Same logo, same food that we're getting, but each place is a little bit different because that franchise owner is different. And so we got the blessing of a business and we get to steward it the way that we see fit. So the best thing that you can do is identify what strengths do you have that you can put into that business and that you can run that way, right? Jenna and Christy, they could say Instagram, social media, photography, that's my niche or that's my niche, I should say. Not like what they niche down to, but they're really good at it. KK, she's amazing at logos, right? That's not really mine. And if I sit here trying to do logos and graphics all day, I'm going to burn my candle pretty low because that's not what makes my baby jump, right? It's not what I get excited about. It's not my strength. But all day long, I love to see other people reach their goals. 
pour into them in a different way, get to the root of their issues and talk to them and build them up in the way that they want, right? I'm more of the customer care. So there are different strengths and weaknesses. And what we need to identify is that is okay. Do not look at the grass in another business and say, man, that's greener. I wish I could hop over to her side. I was driving to this week and what I heard, which is kind of crazy, and it ties into all of this is that slogan, I don't even know where it was the makeup commercial where it said, maybe she's born with it or maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> and the Lord started talking to me all about our businesses. And I feel like so many, so many of us look at other businesses and think, man, she's got it all together. He's got it all together. She must have been born with that, right? But then I heard the Lord say, or maybe it's Maybelline. Where am I going with this? Sometimes we have to grow ourselves in different areas in order to look successful. In order to have a successful business, we have to put on our entrepreneur pants and say, what are my strengths that my business is going to look really good here? And what are my weaknesses? So let's go there. Can you guys think of a couple weaknesses that you might have? What weaknesses do you have in this business? For me, I would have said public speaking. I do not like to public speak at all. I like the behind the scenes stuff. I'm an event planner. I'm all about the details. I like to have the schedule from A to Z, but then I'm going to hand the microphone to someone else so they can run that event. That's me, right? But I had to grow in that in different areas that we went. What are other things that you can do? I'm so not good at numbers, but that does, I can't ignore the numbers, right? I have to dig deeper there. Can you guys think of a couple of weaknesses that you might need to grow in? If you can, throw them in the chat. I told you I love to have a little bit of interaction tonight. Customer care, advancing customers, customer care. Customer care is typically a big one, especially for Team Revive, if we're being honest. We are good at getting people to start their journey, but then encouraging them throughout that is a huge thing. Follow-up is huge. And the fortune is in the follow-up, right? I can't tell you now that I've been here for about five plus, almost six years doing the business side, how much or how crucial follow-up is. My business is a testimony of follow-up after follow-up after follow-up after follow-up. Every single person who have who has ever said that they were interested in the business, guess what I'm doing? Following up with them and telling them about the messenger event I'm having tomorrow night about the business. Every time there is a sale, I'm going through and looking, who can I follow up with and let them know this is the best time for them to get their supplements. They can try the supplements out at that point too for the best bang for their buck. There's always great touch points. Whenever we come out with a new product, following up them, when somebody tells you when their um, payment is gonna come in or when they'd like it, public speaking, follow up, consistency. Consistency is so huge. That's a whole thing in itself. Numbers, talking about the business side, that's a true thing. Public speaking, I love it. Okay, so what I want you to do too, I have some action steps for this particular Zoom is I want you to identify three weaknesses that you have that you want to work on, that you need to work on, right? Okay, so I would say consistency is 100% a weakness that needs to be worked on. But for everybody, their weaknesses are going to look different. Everybody doesn't have to public speak to be successful in Plexus. Think about your weaknesses and think about if they are something worth working on in your business. If they're not, go ahead and throw them by the wayside. But if they are, dig deep. Find trainings on YouTube that are specifically going to speak into those areas and work on those. If you don't know where they are, reach out to your upline, me, Krista, Chelsea, Deborah, any of your uplines that can help find you training specific to what your business needs to work on. And we will help you grow in those areas. We'll help keep you accountable. Accountability is huge. When you're focusing on what can I focus on in my business? What am I doing really well that's helping this machine work well, right? 
I love the quote, um, you won't rise to the level of your goals, but you're going to fall to the level of your systems. What systems do you have in place for yourself and then for your team as well? I love the concept of sowing and reaping. It's so biblical. It's been you know, grasped by the world as well. But my husband and I say all the time in so many different areas, so where you want to go. What does that mean? Plant seeds where you want to go. What are you looking to do? So if there are weaknesses that you have that you want to grow in, plant seeds there, whether it be training to yourself, whether it be taking a daily action step every single day, whether it be writing something on your mirror, you're going to plant seeds. A farmer does not plant seeds and expect something from the morning to show up at night. It takes time to plant and to allow that plant to get watered and then to till the soil and all of the steps that a farmer does, it takes time to see the harvest and the harvest is coming. I love it. We talked, um, I talked to one of the girls in my business this week and she was talking about, it's so cool. It seems like my business goes in 90 day cycles. She didn't know that that really is how this business happens. You have planting seasons and then you're going to have harvest seasons. I have months where I don't enroll a whole lot of people or I don't see a whole lot of point growth. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, right? But I'm doing the same consistent things and growing in that area. I think one of the biggest shifts that we need to have in our business is a lot of us think we have all of these sacrifices that we have to make for a business. Well, I'm standing proof that I might have had sacrifices. I don't hardly watch TV at all anymore, hardly at all, because between ministry and Plexus and my children, it's like if we're watching TV, it's something my children want to watch. But all the other time, I'm watching a training, I'm doing a devotion, I'm doing other things. You might think, oh, she sacrificed that TV time. No, it wasn't worth it. And I was investing into my business instead, and I was watching it grow. So our mindset shift there is watch things go from what you think you're sacrificing now, actually you're investing into your future, right? It's that law and lesson of sowing and reaping. What can we change? And some of you guys aren't willing to make the sacrifices. And I think the bottom line goes to belief. Do you believe the seeds that you're planting are going to bring a harvest? If the answer is yes, I think that you would do the work. When the farmer is out there, he's like, I'm going to get corn. I'm going to get tomatoes. I'm going to get wheat, right? He's doing it for a purpose and he knows his harvest is coming. And so I want to encourage you guys tonight to believe that if you plant good seeds in your business, in yourself, in the people that God brings into your path, you're going to reap a harvest in due time. I love the scripture in Galatians that talks about not growing weary in well-doing because at the proper time, the harvest is going to come if you don't give up. All of our timing might be a little bit different, but if you're doing good things for yourself, for your business, for your teammates, your harvest is going to come. You just need to not give up. I love Dave Ramsey and everything he does, but I think there are tons of people who have taken his quote. And basically, if we live like nobody else today, then you can live like nobody else tomorrow. What does that mean? That initially, as you're planting these seeds, it might seem like hard work. It might seem like you're sacrificing a whole lot. It might seem like you came from a teaching job and you're like, wait, I'm still working a whole lot. I wanted to stay at home with my kids. But if you plant those seeds and you get good systems set up and you build consistency in your business and in your life, that harvest is going to come and it's going to get easier. It's going to become second nature and it's going to be easier because you get to lock arms with other people who are now also doing the plowing, who are also planting good seeds. And then you have freedom like nobody else. Right now, Chris and I are on the other side where we worked really hard and I feel like different months are running seasons, they're planting seeds, they're working seasons. And then others are like, wow, we're just 
in the reaping harvest and it goes in cycles. So know that that's what network marketing does. There are ups and there are downs that we talk about all the time and there are lessons all throughout that. And I love it. I love that I get to introduce a dear friend of mine who would, I would have never thought that she would have done the business. And actually when she first messaged me to order the reset, through Instagram, we had not talked Plexus before, but clearly she had been watching me. She is going to share her story with you. She was like, girlfriend, you all saw that way. I want to order. I'm like, ha ha ha. Like didn't even send her my link. Thought she was for sure joking. Um, and then of course she ordered, she had great results, but I have watched her grab a hold of this, not even really knowing what she's doing. And she's taken it for herself as an entrepreneur. And it's kind of like a fun thing that she's doing on the side. But y'all, she's bringing people in, showing them what she's doing and helping them also succeed. And she'll be gold by the end of this week, probably y'all. She has 90 points. She's not been around for maybe more than a month. I don't even know if it's been a month yet. Um, but she knew that she had this opportunity and what she could offer other people. And I would love, Jesse, for you to just kind of share what you're doing, opening up um, people into the journey and allowing them to kind of do it with you and get healthy with you. Um, and you guys, she's going to have some great nuggets, tips. Make sure you have your pencil and pen, and I'm going to hand it over to her. Take it away, girlfriend. Yeah, thank you, Morgan. Um, it's funny. I've only been using Plexus for like a month and a week, I think. Um, so I'm definitely new um, and still learning a lot. And kind of the way my family kind of positions ourselves is we want to always be learners, always be paying attention to even just opportunities and nuggets that the Lord's bringing into our lives. And so um, something that's really important that we joke around about is people always pray for revival or God to do a miracle or all these things. And then he, he does his breadcrumb trail where he's actually trying to lead you into the things you're praying for. But so many times we think it's supposed to happen a different way. And so we're looking for something else besides what the thing is that God's actually doing. And so something that I just encourage my friends to do, and we just kind of do as a family is just following the breadcrumb trail. If there's something that's sticking out to you, it's probably not a coincidence. It's probably God if you're seeking him. And so I know for me, um, it was actually, um, I, I, so I've had three kids in the last four years and <laughs> feel like I've been pregnant, like nonstop. So I have a five-year-old, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And my husband and I were in full-time ministry and we host revival events all around the country. Um, our schedules are super busy. I do itinerant ministry. Um, so all the people on there that wrote, they hate public speaking. I'd love to help you because I love talking to groups of people. It's my favorite thing in the world. Um, I'm a natural sharer. And um, to be honest, though, after I had my daughter, I, I never really had a hard time losing weight, never had a hard time being healthy. Um, my husband, Parker, actually used to be a personal trainer at Equinox and studied nutrition. So um, he was doing keto and carnivore diet like way before everyone else was. And so it was never honestly something I even had to think about um, in my in my college years and high school years, too. I just was always pretty skinny and what I thought was healthy. Um, and then after I had my daughter. I just could not lose the weight. And um, I know that there's probably a lot of you that can relate to that. It, just like a feeling of being stuck. And that's the best way that I can describe it. Like I literally would pray, like if there's like a supernatural way that this weight can just go away, I'm like all for it. Um, but I was going to Pilates classes, doing keto and literally like just gaining weight and feeling super frustrated. And something I just want to encourage you is, um, and Morgan, obviously she shared this. She didn't even know that I was following her journey. And the reality is, is for so many of you, you don't realize what friends are in your life, what people on social media, even if you have 50 followers on Facebook or 
on Instagram or whatever. Like I hear people say all the time, like, I don't have a huge following. That doesn't matter. That's like still 50 human beings that are saying that I'm choosing to follow what you're posting about, what you're saying, and you can grow those things by providing valuable information to your audience. Um, but there always are people watching and paying attention to what you're doing. Even if you think I'm not an influencer, I'm just a mom at home. No one cares about what I'm doing. People do because um, we're relational. That's how God created us to be. We're created to be with other people, right? So we want to know what's working for our friends, what's working for other people. And so I had seen for a few months, um, honestly, Morgan posting about Plexus and about the pink drink and doing funny reels. And honestly, I was like, she's so cute. She's so funny. That's never for me. I'm never going to do it, but good for her. And my husband was like, very, if you no my husband Parker at all. He's very anti-network marketing, was very much like we are very single focused about revival, like keep your eyes on track. And in April, I was like, listen, I'm going to really start getting serious about my health. And I preached at this conference. We baptized 300 people which is amazing. And we pray for the harvest, right? Like, just like Morgan was saying, I, I pray for the harvest of souls all the time. I want to be a worker in the harvest. And after three hours of baptizing people, honestly, and this is like not, I wouldn't share this publicly probably, but um, so many of us want to see revival, but we're actually not taking care of ourselves to be actually physically prepared for revival. And it's actually hard physical work to do the ministry the, for the things that we're praying for we need in this nation. And so after baptizing people for three hours, I just felt so weak. I, I actually passed out on the floor um, and <laughs> It was a whole big thing. And I said to Parker, I was like, I need to get my body in check. Like I need to get healthy. I can't keep doing this. Um, so very long story short, tried to get healthy, tried to lose weight. And the worst thing that can happen when you're trying to lose weight is gaining weight. <laughs> and that's what happened. I looked at my scale and I was gaining weight and I was just really frustrated and um, Morgan posted some stories of um, going to this big, glamorous Plexus event. And I love a good party. I love like a celebration. So I was kind of already like my interest was peaked um, in regards to the product. So I would say like that was maybe the first seed that was deposited where I was like, okay, Morgan's taking care of her health. She's taking care of her wellness stuff. I don't know a ton about it, but I don't really think it's for me, but there was definitely a seed deposited. And then honestly, for me, what kind of pushed me over was after she was posting this, these pictures from the events, seeing all these women just celebrating one another and cheering each other on and like screaming about the different jewels going on the stage. I just thought to myself, like, that's something I can get behind is women just like being in each other's corner. And I'm all about that. And so I started to talk to Parker about it. And he was like, no, 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 don't, don't do it. And then Morgan started posting about the reset and her results from the reset. So I just was like, all right, forget it. I'm just buying this. I'm just going to try it. And I told a few of my friends and I was like, let's just do this together for accountability. And here's the thing. So like when a lot of people just start, I see like Kelsey Hecker is on here and Camden and Jess, like these are all girls that I've brought on in just the last month. And mostly because I was like, if I'm going to be on this journey, I want to do this with other people. I want to have friends to do it with because I know it will help me. And I, I'm serious about this. And so um, just started sharing on social media. And I, I was really surprised how many people reached out that they just felt stuck themselves. They felt defeated. Um, 
And then I actually ended up losing about six pounds on the reset, which was amazing for me. So prior to that gaining weight, trying to lose weight, um, losing six pounds on the reset, I, it actually brought me to tears. I was so excited about it. Um, but then for me, the real difference was um, taking the triplex and continuing to see the weight come off, seeing my energy go up. I was like a three cups of coffee a day person. And all of a sudden realizing that I wasn't making a cup of coffee at noon, um, going to the bathroom like regularly. I know this sometimes that's like TMI, but I was like, I said to Parker, I was like, Parker, it's so crazy. Like I'm literally going to the bathroom like every morning. And he was like, yeah, you're like a normal human. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, like that's how you're supposed to be. <laughs> like your body should be going to the bathroom every day. And so for me, it was kind of like, Candid said, ah, me too. It was one of those things where I'm a natural sharer. Like I share my favorite skincare stuff. If I find good leggings on Amazon, I'm going to post about it. Like if I find a favorite restaurant, I'm going to tell all my friends, I'll probably pay for all of them to go because I want to bring other people into things that work and things that are good. And when it really started to work for me, honestly, it wasn't, I didn't even care about making money for it. Um, and I love that Morgan, you talked about sowing and reaping. Cause I'm going to just tell you a kingdom secret that the Lord told me with plexus that I feel like I'm just going to give to you guys. But the Lord just said to me that he did want to even bless me financially through this. And I'm doing it all of this for like the health and weight loss side of things. But I started getting Venmo payments from sharing this. And I was like, wait a minute, like you can also make money <laughs> like sharing this with friends. And the Lord just taught, started to talk to me about how generosity is such a huge, important aspect of what he's doing in America and in this nation. So the Lord actually started to tell me every month to pray about someone to pay for their reset. And so I actually, in the month of July, bought a reset um, for my mother-in-law. And then this month I bought a reset for a worship leader friend that was trying to lose weight and felt really stuck. And what's really cool, and I'm not saying that this is going to be a guaranteed thing that happens, but I just think that it's a spirit of generosity is every time that I went and bought a reset for someone else and sewed into their journey just to bless them, that same day I would have three people sign up that I didn't even reach out to. And I'm not saying that that's like a guaranteed thing that's going to happen. Like you buy a reset for someone and God's going to supernaturally give you three people. But I am saying like, if you can posture your heart in a position of not always wanting, but actually wanting to help other people and so into other people. Like my friend Jess, I see her is on here. Like her products haven't come in yet. And I'm like digging through my cabinets to give her products just to help her on her journey. And I think that if we keep having that mindset of sowing seeds, of blessing other people, of bringing people into our journey with us, I really think that all of us will be very surprised how much God will continue to just open doors, relationships, and honestly, just favor through that. And I think that kind of goes into every area of life, not just plexus, but even just, um, just asking God every single day, like, who can you be blessing? Who can you be praying for? Who can you be encouraging? What mom can you maybe give a gift basket to that have some products in there just to kind of give her some like love and encouragement? And I just think that you'll see that in that God will really start to even just pour out more blessing um, over you. And so I don't know what else to say, Morgan. I can answer any questions or whatever, but I don't know what <laughs> else. Girls. So good. If you guys do have questions for Jesse, pop them into the chat, but I'm a hundred percent in agreement with 
sewing into that. And so that goes into the sacrifice versus investment. So some of us might not be able to buy somebody a whole reset, but you can give somebody a stick of your slim. Or when I first did sip and seize, I would use, use a water bottle like this, put slim in it and pour it so people could taste them out of that. Or your generosity is going to go a long way. And so finding those different areas that you can do that and in Jesse's story, you're hearing what she needed right then was to lose weight. So the reset spoke to her. And so as you're promoting different ways, what kind of problems are in your friends and family around you? How can you speak to that and be the solution, right? You want to be a problem solver in different people's life. And our business has different areas to better their lives and a variety of them, right? We have weight management, we have wellness, we have a skincare line, um, and we have a business opportunity. So being able to build those relationships and keep them going before you're just telling them the whole thing or um, being so focused on what you need. Um, Jesse came in this with an idea of, I want to get healthy and I want other people to get healthy with me. So think about those things where you might be a little bit stuck and how can you flip the script on that mindset? How can we change our own self in order to better other people as well? Because we're in the other's business. Are any questions coming up? I can't see the chat. I really should be on computer. Come on. All right, Jesse, we need a public speaking Zoom. I love that. Yes. Blessing other different people. Praying into your business is so huge. I think that there have been so many moments throughout my journey where the Lord lays somebody on my heart and then they come. My cousin Allie was one of those people and it, it's all a matter of timing. So you plant those seeds and you watch them grow in different times. Some of them are instant. Some of them take a little bit of time, but know that the work that you are doing is going to produce fruit. I loved the quote that I put in my um, chat the other day. It talked about, don't just get excited about your rank ups. Don't just get excited about your achieved goals. What are your daily wins? Your daily wins. Did you wake up this morning and you were consistent again? Were you able to pray over your team members? Were you ever able to check up with one person? Did you make your post today? Celebrate the consistency. If consistency was your weakness is public speaking your fear and you went live on your Facebook, celebrate that. And all of those little wins are going to add up to a bigger victory. So I don't want to take your guys's time up too much more. Thank you so much for bearing with our crazy technical difficulties. Um, we'll figure out how to get this recording onto YouTube and we will post that so you guys can get this to your teams. If you guys have questions for me or Jesse at any point, feel free to message me. And I'm looking forward to the end of August. It's going to be awesome. If you have not heard, I am having a messenger event tomorrow about the business of gut health. It's going to be about 15 minutes. It's on Facebook and you can invite any potentials to that. It's going to be short, sweet, but these events don't oftentimes bring you your biggest business builder, but what it does is start lots of conversations because they're going to get 15 minutes of different posts where you're able to say, Hey, what stuck out to you? Did any questions come up? And you're going to start to hear what are their reservations from sharing this with a friend? What do they get um, what would their goals be? What would be a financial blessing to their family that could make, make a huge difference? Almost every event is that way. You'll have people who are ready to order right away and you have other people who are going to sit on it for a little bit. So again, beating a little bit of a dead horse, but it's the planting and you plant the seed, you follow up and you bring them to something else, plant the seed, follow up, and then you're going to watch it grow from there. All right. I'm going to pray. And then we'll have a great night. God, we just thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for Team Revive. I thank you for the blessing that you've given us as business owners. God, I pray that you would just prick our hearts, God, for what we need to focus in. I pray that nobody steps outside of the grace that you have um, on their life, God, but that you 
um, just stretch down. I just pray for even a wave of encouragement. I feel like there are some hearts on this call that just need encouraged tonight, that they're doing a good job, that they're able to just even step out on the water. I feel like some of this is a faith journey for some of you guys, and that the Lord is just going to continue to speak to you about exactly what you're supposed to be doing. I pray for creative business ideas. I pray um, for mindsets right now. God, I pray that you would breathe belief into the hearts and minds of your people tonight. God, that you created them, you knit them together in their mother's womb perfectly, fearfully and wonderfully. They are made, Lord, and that you have a purpose and a plan for each of us, and it doesn't look the same. I pray that comparison would go and that their joy would return, God, that um, comparison can't be a thief any longer, but the joy of the Lord will be our strength. God, I thank you for this week and for this month, Lord. May you bless everything that our hands touch and um, that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus throughout the week. In your precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. I love y'all. Have a great week. We will see you next week.